Welcome to the topic on resources. After completing this topic, you will be able to explain what the three resource types are. Create resource master data. Use resources in bills of materials and in the production process. Define the resource unit of measure of and explain the runtime calculation. Please note that a prerequisite for this topic is familiarity with the topic production concept. In this example, we look at the company OC Woodtrend, which produces custom wooden doors and windows based on customer specifications. To manufacture these products, OC Woodtrend has defined their employees and machinery as resources in the system. Now they can manage their availability and capacity for the production process. The resource is defined as master data in the system. There are three types of resources. Machine type, this is a resource that can be linked to one or more fixed assets, taken from the fixed assets master data list. Labor type, this is a resource that can be linked to one or more employees, taken from the employee's master data list. Other type, any other resource that is not a machine or labor. Much like items, resources can be used in bill of materials and marketing documents. When a bill of materials is produced, a machine resource is often needed in a production process, and an employee resource may be needed as well, for example, to operate this machine. Much like items, resources can be ordered or purchased or sold or have other action performed in marketing documents. To do this, we first need to connect a non-inventory item to the resource. This item, which represents a resource, is then used in a marketing document. Unlike items, resources are not accumulated in quantities. They are managed by capacity. In SAP Business One, we can plan and define a daily capacity for the resources. By monitoring this capacity, we can optimize the production plan and avoid bottlenecks. This is an image of resource master data. Here you can define important data, such as resource type and group, resource unit of measure, and resource capacity. In this topic, we will cover these three aspects. Resource types. Resource groups. Resource unit of measure and runtime calculation. Resource capacity management is covered in the resource capacity course topic. Let us start with the resource type. You can select the relevant resource type, machine or labor or other, in the resource type field, in the header of the resource master data window. When you select machine as the resource type, the fixed assets tab is activated in the master data record. One or more fixed assets can be selected for a machine. When you select labor as the resource type, the employees tab is activated instead of the fixed assets tab, and you can associate employees with this resource. The other type is used for resources that are not fixed assets or employees. Note that to work with fixed assets and see the fixed assets tab, you first need to activate this feature on the company details window in the administration system initialization menu path. Each resource type can have many resource groups. The resource groups are used to group together machines, employees or other resources that have similar types of costs. Resource groups are defined on the resource group setup window. Here, you can define up to 10 user-defined cost components for each group. Each cost component can be given a meaningful name for a cost related to the resource. The amount entered in the default standard cost column sets the ratio of expense amount of each cost component in a journal entry made for the resource. In the image on the right, we can see a crafting machine group definition. This group has the resource type machine. Three resource standard cost components were defined for this group, amortization, maintenance, and overhead. The list of default standard cost in the resource master data is taken from the resource group definition. These costs can be changed manually for each resource master data. In our business example, OC Woodtrends has five lathe machines that they use in production. Since they have similar types of costs, they have been grouped together in the crafting machine resource group. It is possible to define a different GL account for each resource standard cost, which will be used in the production journal entry. For more information about production cost, GL account determination for production and production standard cost, see the next course topics. The capacity of a resource is measured in the resource units of measure. This unit of measure have time type units, such as hours or minutes, as well as any other type of unit, such as a cycle, turn, and so on. This resource unit is used during planning and consumption of the capacity in bills of materials and production orders, including all related transactions, such as the issue for production. To translate the resource consumption time in the production process, we need to define the specific time period the unit of measure text represents. 
The time per resource units field, 15 minutes, represents the time needed for the res. Units per time period, one unit, to be consumed in production. The runtime or consumption time of a single unit of resource is equal to the time per resource units divided by the resource units per time period. Learn more about planning and consuming resource capacity in the resource capacity course topic. Let us examine this scenario. The machine resource usually runs in 15-minute cycles. The unit of measure text for this resource is cycle. The capacity of the resource is measured in cycles and the quantities in the bill of materials are also in cycles. At OC Wood Trend, in the bill of materials of a wooden door, they need three cycles of the lathe machine to produce one door. To define the runtime of the machine in a specific production order, we need to convert cycle units of measure into time. The formula of the conversion between the resource unit of measure text, cycle, and time is as follows. When the time per resource units is 15 minutes, the resource units per time period equals one cycle. When the time per resource units is one hour, the resource units per time period equals four cycles. This setting allows us to calculate the runtime of the specific resource needed to produce the required quantity of the final product. In our case, three cycles of the machine are needed to produce one door. The resource runtime calculation is bill of material quantity multiplied by time per resource units slash resource units per time period. In our example, it is 45 minutes. Now that OC Woodtrend knows how to define the runtime of the resources, they can plan and manage the capacity of these resources. The way to define and manage resource capacity is described in the course topic resource capacity. Because different types of resources, machine or labor or other, can be included in one production order, simplified calculation of the total production order runtime is applied. The total runtime of a production order is the maximum value of the production time of the resources in the production order. This image is taken from a production order that contains two resources, a lathe machine and a machine operator. To produce this bill of materials, three cycles of the lathe machine are needed. Since each cycle equals 15 minutes, three cycles are equal to 45 minutes. In addition, a half an hour, 30 minutes, is needed from the operator. The total runtime of the production order equals the maximum resource production time, which is 45 minutes. Note that this scenario is for a non-routing production order. To learn more about production orders with routing, refer to the course production process. Here are some key points to take away from this session. There are three types of resources, labor, machine, and other. The machine resource type can be linked to a fixed asset in the system. The labor resource type can be linked to an employee in the system. Resources can be connected to items and thus can be represented in marketing documents. Each resource can have up to 10 standard cost components. The default cost can be defined in the resource group. Runtime parameters should be defined in the resource's master data to plan capacity for the resource. 